if you drop if you drop a medicine ball and you say catch this and absorb it, they'll yield. The question mark is how and where. Good morning, happy Wednesday. I have neuro coffee in hand and it is perfect. Okay, so it's Wednesday. That means that tomorrow morning is Thursday, 6 a.m. Tomorrow morning, coffee and coaches conference call as usual. We've been doing these for over a year. Having a great time, great groups, great questions, sharing information, please uh, join us for that. The link will be on my professional uh, Facebook page just prior to the call. Okay, uh, intensive 13, day one, tomorrow. Um, got notification everybody's gonna make it. So this is exciting for me because I was afraid that somebody wasn't gonna make it because of some professional commitments. Um, but like I said, everybody's coming, so I'm ready for that. Um, today's Q&A is from Zach, and Zach's question was regarding some connective tissue behavior. And so we, what we have to do when we talk about connective tissues, we have to recognize the fact that, that connective tissues respond to seven elements of force. I talk about rate a, a great deal because rate tends to be a very predominant um, um, element of force where we can actually see these connective tissue behaviors in regards to the yielding and the overcoming actions. Zach's question was pertaining more, more to yielding, and we actually talked about how location plays into this uh, a little bit more than we, we typically would. So again, I think this is going to be useful uh, for a lot of people. So thank you, Zach, for your question. If you would like to participate in a 15-minute consultation, please go to askbillhartman at gmail.com, askbillhartman at gmail.com, put 15-minute consultation in the subject line so I don't delete it, and then we will arrange that at our mutual convenience. Everybody have an outstanding Wednesday. I will see you tomorrow, 6 a.m. on the Coffee and Coaches Conference call. Have a great day. Um, so my question is in regards to training, like, different connective tissue behaviors. Um, it, when we're, like... Whatever the variation is, I guess, for context, just speaking, like if you're trying to train a yielding, a more like bias towards a yielding action of the connective tissues, uh -huh. is, it, is there some sort of like local training effect um, in terms of like whatever variation you're doing is actually improving the local ability of the connective tissue by itself to yield or to be more stiff in the other side of the equation? Or is it more so that like the connective tissue itself is dumb for lack of better way of saying it and it's just going to respond to like whatever load you're using or the activity or like the orientations proximally that are placing load through it while you're doing the activity and I guess the question is coming from the standpoint of um, for those of us whether we're in like a team strength conditioning setting or like working in higher volume PT set settings where you can't monitor every like the changes in relative motions and range of motion after every activity nice. if we're trying to prescribe these activities is it not doing what we think it's doing if they're not able to maintain certain positions throughout the session um, or would you get some benefit just by virtue of the activity itself okay when you say when you say maintain positions what what are you specifically referring to give me an example so i understand uh so like so let's say you did something to recapture relative motions and like they're but then you give an activity that's too advanced for that person and then they start to lock up again um, and they're just not able to maintain um, with that. Uh oh, cutting out a little. Answer that for now. Um, we, were, we were cutting out on that last little little part. You know? Yeah. Um, so saying like you, like you do like they come in and they're lacking relative motions. You do something right. that you feel recaptures it. Yep. Um, but then the activity that you prescribe after that um, is too advanced for them, um, and then they start to lose that motion again. Okay. Are, are they supposed to maintain relative motions at high force? No. Okay. Did you give somebody something high force that would take away relative motion? Um, so I guess if it's, if, if it's a prescribing a high force activity, then that would make sense. But what if it's more on like the lower load side of things? Okay. So at least you've established a threshold. So you know where, where you can take somebody if you're trying to maintain something, you probably have an idea of, of the types of activities that you're gonna, you're gonna have to select. Um, when, when you're trying to, to address yielding, we have to think about sort of like a localization type of, 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 a, of a concept. It's like, where are you trying to produce the yield? And then you have to start thinking about the time exposure, right? So, and, and, and there's, 
a lot of variability when we talk about, about the exposure of time from a prolonged static hold to um, literally some variations of, of explosive work have a longer, longer time exposure than, than others, right? So um, what, give me a specific um, activity that you're trying to utilize or a specific goal that you're trying to achieve with someone. So we can talk about this a little bit more in context because let me give you a reason. Static hold would produce a yielding action. So I like if I do like a static stretch, a traditional static stretch will produce a yielding action if I hold it long enough, right? Okay. If I do a max effort squat and I compare that to jumping off of a 24 inch box, the duration of exposure to the connector tissues is actually longer in the box jump than it is in, in the max effort squat, which means that I would get more yield relative to the heavy squat. So now we have to start thinking about context. It's like, where are you trying to express this yielding activity? Is it in normal walking? Is it in some other form of exercise? Is it during a specific sporting activity? Because we have to be very, very specific because we have, we have time constraints in certain situations and we don't have time constraints in certain situations. We have magnitude that we have to address. And in other times it's just you know, body weight based movement. So, so narrow the context for me just a little bit. All right, so, so as far like, let's say it's someone who's just shoved way forward. So like everything's like kind of on the lower extremities behaving more stiffly. Yeah. Um, and then from an exercise standpoint, like it's standing on a box, drop a med ball, have them catch, drop and absorb that. Okay. Because they're shoved way forward. And let's say I didn't do anything to address that. Okay. And still did that exercise. Yeah. Would I get some sort of benefit out of that from a yielding like capability? Uh, they'll yield. The question mark is where? Okay. Okay. Do you want them to yield at the first metatarsal phalangeal joint? Probably not what I was going for. Well, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, no, I'm no, getting here. Like literally, so here's what, so you ever have those people that um, when you ask them to jump or land and they, they, they land in this late ah. representation, they land in a late foot, where, where they're, they're just on the ball of their foot, their heels way up. The yield is at the first metatarsal phalangeal joint. If that's what you want, then, then, then you got it. If you want the yield more distributed somewhere else, like if you want them to, to be able to move through like a middle propulsive representation, it may behoove you to actually capture that middle propulsive representation first and then start to apply an activity where you can produce the yield in that position because you've got muscle activity that's going to restrict your capabilities to access a position. And that might be where you need to go first versus trying to produce a randomly applied yielding action. Right. Right. Because they will yield. Like if you drop, if you drop a medicine ball and you say catch this and absorb it, they'll yield. The question mark is how and where. Do you want do you want the yield to be in the medial knee, right? And we've all seen those people that they jump off a box and their knees kind of slam together when they're landing, right? Yeah. So so again, that's a yield. Is it where you want it to be? Right. Right. So so acquisition of position may be where you want to start to make sure that when you are producing the the yielding actions that they're going to be produced where you want them to be.